What if you're using the Hello theme with Elementor and you want to have a sidebar that repeats on maybe many pages or your blog or even your shop pages? Creating a sidebar is really easy with an Elementor template. So let's get started. Let's go over to WordPress templates within your sidebar, which is down here. And now we're going to click add new. By the way, I am using Flexbox containers on it, but it is still called section within the template. So don't get confused by that. I've also called it sidebar and we're going to click create template. Now you can almost ignore any of the templates it gives you here because we're going to build one completely from scratch, but you have to now have a think about how big is your sidebar going to be. So if the layout of your website is mainly 1100 when you get to the desktop in terms of like a boxed width, you might decide that your sidebar is going to be 200, 300 pixels. You want to understand that right now because the way you build it, if you don't get it right, it's going to affect what happens later on. The first thing I'm going to do is create a layout that has two containers, okay? And I'm going to make the parent container be 1100. Now, my sidebar, in its full, when it's fully built, will be just one single container. But before I can do that, what I want to do is get my layout right. So we've got a 1100 boxed uh, parent container. I'm then going to go over to my second sidebar. In fact, what I'll do is I'll do it over here. When we actually build it, it's going to be on the right hand side, but we'll just build it on the left for now. I'm going to go to the first child container and I'm going to set the width of this to be 300 like that. The reason I'm doing this is like I've just said is now I will know exactly how it looks when I eventually move it over. I'm going to set the height of this container to be a VH of 100 because eventually it's going to be the full height of the screen. I'm also going to go in and zero out all of the margin and padding. Again, that's mainly because I like to have full on control how everything looks. Now, before I start to modify the padding any further, a good thing to do is to get all of your components in. So I'm going to drop in a heading. We'll have a bit of text underneath. How about some social sharing icon? How about a form? And I'm going to go and drop in a loop grid as well. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to change this header. I'm going to drop in an image. I'm going to go for 175. I'm going to leave the text as it is. For the social sharing icons, I'm just going to show the icons and I'm going to set them to be a circle. I'm going to change the color of these social sharing icons. Go over to see how does it look on the mobile. If it looks okay on the mobile in terms of size, duplicate it and just reuse it again. Don't go and drop in another brand new header, okay? So that header has actually just gone here. Let me just pop it over there. This form isn't a contact form. It's going to be used as a subscribe one. So we're going to get rid of the name, get rid of the email there. Sorry, the, uh, the message. We're going to say that um, this is going to be about 60% in width. I'm also going to get rid of the label. And when we go to the send button, which is down here, I'm going to change that to be subscribe. Now, this is where depending on the font or the styling of your typography, it might start to look a little bit cramped, but we're going to go and change this to be 40. So I'm going to go to my button and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just modify the padding. Um, so by zero everything out, that is now actually fitting well within. So just bear that in mind if you find that the styling doesn't look absolutely right, you can modify that to get it to kind of fit. So we have a bit of a a subscribe form going on there. And of course you would link that to your mailing list. I'm just gonna add in a little bit of padding, something like that there. Now down here is where I'm now gonna show a loop grid as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over here, make sure it's looking at posts. I'm then gonna very quickly create a template. I'm just going to drop in a um, uh, an image like that. And I'm also just going to drop in the post title as well. Now at this point, it is looking really, really weird. Okay, so what we're going to do is hit the save and back button. So I'm now going to set this to be one and I'm going to say, just show me the first five. Now I can see the exact layout. Okay, now I go back in to edit the template. So remember that when you add the loop grid in, you can't modify how many posts it shows until you've created your initial template. Uh, a lot of people do get caught out by that. Let's just very quickly change our styling. I'm gonna go with a 120 pixel wide image like that. I give a bit of custom whip to the post title there just so it fits a little bit nicer. And then I'm gonna go back to my container that contains everything and just say center align it. Now you could add further stuff into here. So if you wanted to add the excerpt, for instance, if there was one, if you wanted to add a button, you could do or. You could just click on the entire container, go down to where it says additional options. And what you will then do is pick a, a link like that. 
And then over here, where you have the dynamic tag, remember you're on the entire container that sits here, okay? And you went and selected additional options, a link, and I'm gonna say now do post URL. So it doesn't matter where you click here, it will take you to the post URLs. So if we now hit save and back, you should get an idea for how this is looking. Now at the moment, it is very, very spaced out. But I'm gonna to go to the style tab for the loop grid and I'm just gonna kind of set this to be zero. Now the final thing you wanna do though is we didn't apply any padding inside of here. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go, okay, uh, from the top, I might have maybe 10 from the top or no, nothing. You might decide that you wanna add in about 40 from the bottom, but on the left and right, you know, I would, I would strongly recommend you go for about 20 just because you don't want everything to be too cramped up close together. Again, just check how that looks on the mobile. That looks fine. So before I hit publish button, we're now going to go back and just ref um, refine how the layout is. So what we have is a parent container. We have the child container where we built the sidebar. And then we have another child container, which is like completely empty. So what I'm going to do is completely delete that out away. Go to your parent container, okay? Set it to be full width, 100%. And just make sure the margin and padding is completely zeroed out, okay? So the entirety of that container, zero, zero, zero. There's nothing else going on. And it is set to full width, 100%. And if we go back to our templates, we can see the sidebar and we have our short code. What I'm gonna do is just pick up and copy that short code. So let's imagine this is like one of your pages. It might be a, uh, a post, it could be a single post template. It could be a product archive. It could be anything literally. And you've gone and set up your pages to basically look like this. You've got two containers, okay? And this is where your containers are all 1,100. This container here, as what we did previously, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna set this to be a 300 pixel width like that. So I've set the first container to be 800 pixel and the second child one to be 300. We're gonna to go to this container and I'm gonna zero out all the margin and padding. Remember, for consistency, because our template has everything in there. What we'll then do is drop in the short code widget, which is here, and into here we then drop in the short code like that. And you can see what it has now done. I mean, I'm going to hit apply. Um, so if you imagine now, I could build whatever I want onto this side of the page. I have my sidebar. And this sidebar is going to basically be visible wherever you drop in that short code. So all I've, I mean, look, let me just hit update for a moment. Let me go back over to my sidebar. Let me now change this image to be a square image. And let's just go and give it a border radius like that, let's hit update, okay? Now let me go back over to my actual page where I've just done this, okay? I'm just gonna click update for a moment to make sure I've, I have saved it. And now I'm gonna refresh the page. It should bring over that new image because you've changed it in the template. So if you decide you're gonna add more social sharing icons or you're gonna change the layout or anything like that, you can really easily simply do that by building out your template sidebar. If you follow the steps I've given, it does keep it really easy. Just remember though to the parent container, zero out the margin and padding, everything is done within the child container. And when you do eventually add it to a page, just make sure that the container that contains the short code is the same size. So for anyone out there that's using the Hello theme and they've gone, oh, I really wanted a sidebar. You can do it without using any other extra plugins and stuff like that. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow, and I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life. I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag.